Hey everybody, Jeff Butts from the Mac Observer here, and I'm going to take you on a tour through disk utility in macOS High Sierra. Now, if you haven't been in disk utility yet, then you don't know the things have changed a bit. The uh, Basically, Apple has trimmed things down quite a bit. They've simplified the interface. And what you might not realize is that all you see now are the actual partitions or volumes on your particular drive. Um, what you don't see are the APFS containers or the, the root identification of the drive. For example, this is an APFS volume called clones. Uh, Macintosh HD is a APFS. However, Time Machine, which is on my SATA drive, is macOS Extended, or HFS Plus. Media and Files is H APFS. So we don't see a lot here. Now, we can get that back, but we'll get to that in a minute. If you want to create a volume or delete a volume, you use these buttons here. The plus key will add an APFS volume to the container, and the minus key will delete that particular volume. You have a first aid, which will run various utilities to check the volume for errors. You can adjust the partitions here. This is where you can add or delete partitions. You can erase a partition. However, if it's APFS, you can only erase it as APFS. Now, this is a way that you can convert it to an encrypted, case-sensitive or case-sensitive and encrypted. And you can set security options, but you cannot change it to a different file type. You can also restore, if you're working with an HFS partition, APFS volumes cannot, but you can restore the container and you can unmount or mount. Now, let's say I want to add a partition. I choose the volume or the disk where I want that new volume to appear. And I'm gonna do that on my 64 gig thumb drive. I'll click on partition. And I'll choose to add a partition with the plus sign. And we'll just make this a 15 gig macOS extended journaled partition and I click apply I choose partition and it goes to work it resizes the APFS container it creates the HFS plus volume it initializes it mounts it and it was done before I could even finish talking about it now, this is all well and good, and you can do a lot here, but what you cannot do, as I said before, was convert an APFS partition back to HFS. That's because you have to be able to delete the a APFS container, which you can't do from this view. We can't even see it. Now, if I, up here by my sidebar, choose View and Show All Devices, a lot more appears. Now I see my root of my drive. That's my SATA drive. This is my internal SSD drive. And here's my thumb drive. Now I can partition it as before and I can do all kinds of good things to it. But what I want to do is delete that APFS container. So the best way to do that is to go into this view click on my container, which says container disk six, choose erase, click on format, and I want it to be a Mac OS extended. And then I click erase, it unmounts it, reformats it, erases, and it's done. And now you can see my SanDisk Ultra Drive has two partitions, one called Untitled and one called Transfer Disk. Now let's say I wanted to repartition the drive 
and merge these two partitions together. Again, I go to my root drive here. I click on partition. Click on the untitled partition. Click the minus sign to delete that partition. And Disk Utility automatically gives me the option to resize transfer disk to take up the whole partition, the whole volume. So I'll choose Apply, then Partition. And just like that, it's done. Granted, this is a small drive, so it, it doesn't take as long, but you see how that works. Now, what if I wanted to split an APFS? I can actually do that showing only volumes. I'll go to my Media and Files, choose Partition, hit the plus sign, tell it how much space I want to allocate to the new volume. Let's say I want to give it a terabyte, give it a name. If I look in Format, you'll see I can actually choose to make this an HFS Plus partition if I want to. It will take this out of the APFS container. It will format it as APFS or HFS Plus. Um, but because I have multiple APFS containers on that drive, if I want to take my entire APFS containers and convert them to HFS Plus or reformat them as HFS Plus, I have to go that route. I'll go ahead and keep this as APFS. Click on Apply, Partition. This will take a little bit longer, but it's checking the various snapshots. It's detected an over allocation, but it says it's okay. Shrinks the APFS data structure. You can see the changes in my bar graph here as it's reallocating space. It modifies the partition map and mounts the new partition. And then it's done. Now, if I show all devices, now you'll see I actually have three APFS containers because APFS creates a new container for each volume. Now let's say I want to reclaim this space. I click Partition. I can delete the partition and Media and Files automatically reclaims it. I choose Apply, Partition, and watch it do its thing. Checks the snapshots, finds that over allocation again. Eventually I should clone this whole drive and start fresh, but that's a project for another day. It grows the APFS data structure and it's done. Now, once again, if you need to restore an APFS container, you have to do that for the entire container by choosing Restore, and you can say where you want to restore from, or choose an image, and away it'll go. As you can see, things have come a long way since High Sierra. Uh, in a previous article, I told you that you had to use Disk Util from the command line in order to resize an APFS partition. That's no longer the case. Apple has put the GUI tools in place for us. And now we're able to do that. Well, that's about all for Disk Utility. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you later.